If you haven't been to Revere Beach recently, you might be surprised at how much it's changed. A massive wave of new development has given the once gritty spot a facelift and brought a new group of residents to the city. Of course, this development is also happening as the threat from climate change is rising. And as Adam Riley tells us, that's raising questions about how sustainable it actually is. To say Revere Beach isn't what it used to be wouldn't be entirely accurate. There are still gorgeous views of the water and regulars who look like they've spent their entire lives right here, soaking up as much sun as they possibly can. But these days, as they shoot the breeze, the old timers have to talk a bit louder than they used to. Right now, the sounds of construction are ubiquitous here as a wave of new buildings spring up that look more like Miami than the North Shore. Among them, Ocean 650, developed by the Boston firm Upton and Partners. We wanted it to feel like you were at the beach, because you are at the beach. So we did things like selecting certain colors. Ocean 650 also allows pets. There's actually a dog grooming room right on site. And those amenities are bringing a new kind of resident into a city long known for its grit. It's a 95% occupied. That group of, of millennials from, say, 24 to 36, big. But if you've watched the news over the past few winters, it's hard not to wonder what happens when the beach gets a bit less bucolic. And flooding actually closed this section of 145 along the seawall for most of the day. We're starting to see this water now splash over the side of the seawall. The future could be even messier. A 2018 analysis from the Union of Concerned Scientists projects that in 2045, more than 1,100 Revere homes worth a collective $375 million could be at risk from chronic flooding, more than any other community in Massachusetts. When I asked Upton about the threat from climate change, he said Ocean 650 is built for resilience. Most of the first floor is open parking. There's a drainage swale at the back of the site, so if a 500 or 100 year storm were to hit, likely it would go right through the building, through the parking area, and into the drainage ditch. No damage to the mechanical, electrical, plumbing equipment. All of which is raised off the ground. As you'd expect, Revere's mayor, Brian Arrigo, strikes a similarly reassuring note. I'm confident that the, that the renaissance that we're seeing in Revere will continue for decades uh, into the future. For one thing, Arrigo says, Revere already has developers build for a so-called 25-year storm, while other communities use 10-year storms as a benchmark. And he adds the city is taking other steps to improve coastal resiliency, like dredging this brackish canal just behind the beach so it can handle any flooding. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that the residents are protected. But even if these new developments weather the next big storm with ease, remember, the impacts from climate change will be revealed over decades, not years, which means it may take a while to learn whether the new Revere Beach is really built to last. Adam joins me now. Hey, Adam. Hey, John. So you mentioned the Union of Concerned Scientists said that Revere tops the list in terms of homes threatened by climate change. Do they have a yeah. take on all this building over there? I talked to the woman who co-wrote that study that mm -hmm. I referenced. She made two interesting points. First off, when it comes to chronic flooding, flooding from rising sea levels, regular tidal flow, not extreme weather, the risk is actually bigger inland in lower-lying mm -hmm. marsh areas than it is right on the coast. She also said to me, we know how to build right now structures that are going to be resilient in the short term. But building for long-term resiliency, given how ugly things could get this century, is another matter altogether. Is this just residential or is this a retail deal, mixed-use kind of Residential thing? so far in apartments as opposed to condos, which might be an easier sell given what we're talking about here today. But I think we caught a glimpse in there of this huge project right at Wonderland Station called Waterfront Square. It is massive and it's going to have a hotel, shops, restaurants, entertainment venues, the whole ball. So Mayor works. Rigo is up for re-election. Yep. Let me guess the development is an issue in the Great election. Great punch, yes. Dan Rizzo, who was the mayor before. The prior mayor is running, prior again? Mayor is running against him. It's always, those are great races to cover when uh, someone's trying to get their old job back. And for him, this seems to be issue number one. He says that all this residential development has put a strain on schools, put a strain on roads, roadways, and that he'd put a two-year moratorium on it if he wins. By the way, I'm not quite ready to leave Inman Square yet, if you were thinking that, okay? Just yeah, it's, well, it's, it's up and coming. Up Keep an eye coming. on it. Good to see you. Thanks, Thanks Adam Riley. Appreciate it.